your brother Hello. Larry Adinekon welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of our great God, all powered by the Pastor Larry Adinekon Center for Inspiration. <laughs> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gemstone upon the crown of Jesus. We are sharing truth this morning on how fathers provoke their children, coming from Colossians chapter 3, 18 to the end of it. We are praying together now and after we dive into it. Father, we bless your name, give you glory, give you praise to God, power, might, and majesty. We ascribe unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you and thank you and thank you for your word. Oh God is such a beautiful agency that has helped our lives and brought us to where we are today. Truly, truly given us an inheritance. So, God, we bless you. And we're going to share again with your people. We ask God that you breathe upon our efforts today. In Jesus' His holy name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, then, from 18. <clears throat> Colossians 3, 18. Wives, submit to your own husbands. That is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey um, in all things, your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men please us, but with sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But he who does wrong will be repaid for all that he has done, and there's no partiality. Praise God. Wives, submit unto your own husband. Here we go again. <laughs> about the Christian home. Okay, we have dealt so much on this in the book of Ephesians and so it's not the time we're going to be emphasizing it. But let me just talk about this submission. Submission is not as in to make the man the boss. That's not what the Bible has at the back of, of its mind or uh, the spirit of the Bible. The spirit of it is that there should be a captain. Okay, upon the boat there should be a captain. If there's no captain upon the boat, that boat you never know where it's going to end. There should be a captain. Okay, let the man be the captain. Yeah, when the captain is on the boat or the captain is on uh, in, in a team, for example, there should be a captain. That's just what he's saying there. So, let the man be that captain. Does not mean that let the man be the boss. That's not the idea. Praise the Lord. So, there's just be, uh, leadership will be provided and then we can have a direction. Hallelujah. All right. Then, husbands, love your wives. Do you not know, be bitter against them. Husband, love your wife. Here we go again. And for wives, we don't have any such emphasis. Although, <coughs> in the month of... Uh, Mm, I think it must be May now. I can't remember very well. I think it must be May. Somebody was pointing out, you know, something to me when I made this assertion from the book of Ephesians, and somebody put, pointed something out to me from the book of, uh, I think it's is it Timothy now, Titus, where he was saying that the uh, older women should teach the younger one, you know, to um, to love their husbands and love their children, something like that, you know. Um, and it is it is a nice one actually, uh, but if you if you look at it, there um, is not as specific as this one for wives. Okay, for wives. Not only so, if you look at it again, it's saying that oh, love your husband, love your children. When you need to advise a woman to love her children, there's nothing about that woman. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May God help us. Let's just go on now. So it says. Um, love your wives it is men that we often need to say that to generally speaking a woman a wife when a, when when a wife loves her husband he loves her husband that's just truth about the matter praise the lord <clears throat> it is we men who rationalize and do too much logic and do too much analysis so much so that <laughs> we are the ones that need to be told love your wives the second part of that thing is this do not be bitter towards them hmm. now that statement is loaded because you see as far as i'm concerned what it implies is that you are going to find enough reasons to make you bitter but you shouldn't be hallelujah that's what it implies that you says love your wife do not be, be bitter against them it means things will so happen that you have enough reasons to be bitter but the bible says i'm already aware of that don't be <laughs> in spite of that, I like the spirit of the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, and then it goes to children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing to the Lord. Yeah. There are two things I want to point out here. Number one, this letter was written to the church, and so it's talking about 
uh, church people. So when he says in all things, in all the things that church people do, okay, <laughs> praise the Lord. But you remember at some other time I was teaching uh, on, on, on a Christian family and I said that, look, as long as you are staying under somebody's roof and the person is looking after you, taking care of you, you know, uh, whatever, it is important for you to live obeying that person until you get to a place where you are independent, you are no longer under their roof and things like that. Uh -huh. But in the meantime, while you are under their roof, you are going to obey all things that they are you know, saying to do. Um, and God will give you wisdom, you know, in the case where you have challenging demands from these people, then God will grant you wisdom so that you can please God and please them at the same time. Hallelujah. So it, it says, obey your parents in all things, but fathers do not provoke your children so that they don't become discouraged. Okay, <clears throat> and so we are talking about how fathers provoke their children. Uh, that's what we're talking about today. How does that happen? Many times what we fathers do unwittingly is that we begin to compare ourselves with our children when we were their age. Now that is one thing by which you can discourage your children. When you begin to say at your age, this is what I was doing at your age. This is what this is what the way I was. I was doing this. I was doing and generally speaking, you know, Virtually all fathers are fantastic when it was their age. They are just fantastic. They are just like they sit on the left-hand side of God. <laughs> you know, when they are their age, we always go that way. Praise the Lord. And those things can provoke. Why? Can make <clears throat> a child feel inadequate. Can make a child feel the little, his little effort is not being appreciated. Can make a child feel, um, I've had that before, you know. Can make a child feel, oh no, this is beginning to sound like a broken record. Can make, you know, and all those. It's just so that they will not be discouraged. So we should be careful the things we how we go on about when you when we were their age. When we were at their age, that's what we do. I'm I'm one of them as well, so I should know. And that's one thing, that's one way by which we can discourage these people if we are not careful. May God help us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> and uh, um it says, born servants, obey, I've explained this born servant thing, so I'm not going to bother too much about that. Obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men please that, but in sincerity of that fearing God. In other words, work for your earthly masters as if you are working for God. Work with them with the fear of God. Hallelujah. So don't be eye servants or men pleasers that ah is coming to so that you do some things in his presence and so some other ones in his absence that's not because you see everything you are doing is in the presence of god when that whether that man is there or not god is there hallelujah so serve with fear of god in your hearts you know it says do it heartily as if to the lord and not to men knowing that it is the lord who's going to give you the reward hallelujah so you see, the when you are relating to this, your, your bosses, especially when the bosses are not Christians, it's, it applies to everybody, whether Christian or not. But especially when they are not Christians, use your service to, to draw these people to Christ. Let them say to themselves, ah, ah, whatever this young man has, whatever this young lady has, is desirable. I love to be like this. I love to be like this. I remember very well the story of somebody who had this uh, young uh, accounts clerk, you know, and the person just finished high school, came to work with him. The, ch the chap so transformed his workplace that when the chap now says it's time to go to the higher institution, to the university, he, he didn't know, wouldn't I release this boy to go to, 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 to uh, further his education and improve his lot in life? Will I keep him here just because he has transformed my workplace and things like that? Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, yeah. So that's what the Bible expects us. Use our Christianity to make somebody, you know, turn towards the side of God and we'll be ready to listen to what you have to say concerning the things of God, hallelujah. But that will happen when you serve as heartily as if you are doing it to the Lord. You say, because the Lord will reward you for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. That's the person you are really serving. So as you are serving him, he is the one who will reward you. Even the earthly person may not even be fair to you in his remuneration, you know? but God knows how to pay those things and he will in Jesus' holy name. Thank you very much for sharing time. We appreciate you. God bless you.